think space is silent? Well, it's not. In this video, I'll let you hear the sounds of the largest objects in the universe. They are real sounds captured by NASA and other space agencies, and trust me, they only get more terrifying as we go on. Let's begin. Our journey starts at the very beginning of time, almost 14 billion years ago. Right after the Big Bang, the universe was filled with hot, dense plasma. This early universe wasn't quiet at all. In fact, it behaved a lot like a giant drum, with waves of pressure rippling through it. These pressure waves are called baryon acoustic oscillations. They moved through the early universe at half the speed of light, squeezing and stretching matter as they went. Over time, these ripples left permanent imprints in the distribution of galaxies we see today. Of course, we can't directly hear those ancient waves, but scientists can translate their patterns into sound. When sped up billions of times, they become a slow, deep pulsing, like the heartbeat of the cosmos itself. What you're hearing now is a recreated version of the universe's first song, still written into the very structure of space. It's the opening note in the soundtrack of everything that has ever existed. Next, we jump billions of light years to one of the largest objects in the known universe, the Perseus Galaxy Cluster. This cluster is so huge it holds thousands of galaxies bound together by gravity. At its heart is a supermassive black hole and it's not silent. This black hole sends out pressure waves through the superheated gas that fills the cluster. These waves travel across distances measured in millions of light years. If we could hear them in their natural pitch, they'd be far too low. 57 octaves below middle C, one single wave might take 10 million years to complete a single cycle. To make this rumble audible, scientists raise its pitch dramatically. The result is a low, powerful hum, a sound so deep and steady it feels more like it's vibrating inside your bones than in your ears. This is the largest continuous note ever detected. You're listening to the voice of a structure bigger than entire galaxies, a sound that has been resonating for hundreds of millions of years and we'll likely keep going long after our own galaxy is gone. From Perseus, we head to the Virgo Cluster, home to another cosmic heavyweight, the galaxy Messier 87, or M87. This is the galaxy whose black hole was the first ever photographed, and it too is producing sound. M87's black hole also generates massive pressure waves and surrounding gas, but they're tuned even lower than Perseus in some cases, slipping into the deepest frequencies possible. These sounds are so low that even if we stood right next to the gas clouds, our ears wouldn't detect them. They're below the range of human hearing. Like with Perseus, scientists shift the pitch up so we can hear it. The sound is smoother and softer than Perseus, almost like a slow, rumbling breath from a sleeping giant. It's the quietest giant you'll ever hear, yet the energy behind it could tear entire solar systems apart. NASA took both Perseus and M87's black hole data and decided to give them a remix, speeding up their waves and mixing different wavelengths of data into a single soundscape. They combined X-ray, optical, and radio signals, mapping each to a different sound. Deep synth-like tones for radio, sharp higher notes for X-rays, and steady middle tones for optical light. The result is a growling, layered chorus, the voices of two supermassive black holes speaking at once. You can hear the slow, steady pulses from Perseus underneath the more flowing tones of M87. It's like listening to a duet between two titans, separated by hundreds of millions of light years. These sounds don't just exist for fun. They help scientists understand the physics of black holes and the way they pump energy into their surroundings. Every pitch, every pulse tells a story about matter falling inward and energy blasting outward. When you hear this, you're not just hearing noise from space. You're listening to data converted into something we can actually experience with our senses.
Leaving the realm of galaxy clusters, we head closer to home, to the Andromeda Galaxy, the nearest spiral galaxy to the Milky Way. Even though it's 2.5 million light years away, it's heading toward us and will eventually merge with our galaxy. Andromeda doesn't produce sound we can hear in space, but scientists have taken detailed images of it, captured in infrared, visible light, and x-rays, and turned them into music. This process is called sonification. In Andromeda's sonification, bright stars produce louder notes while their color decides the pitch. X-rays become high, sharp tones. Visible light forms mid-range notes, and infrared turns into deep, resonant hums. The result is a sweeping musical score that rises and falls as your ears travel across the galaxy. It's like listening to a visual photograph. Every twinkle of light becomes part of a vast orchestra. The science behind it is real, but the feeling it gives is more like art. It's a reminder that galaxies aren't just objects. They're dynamic, living systems with their own unique voices. Now we turn inward, toward the center of our own galaxy. The Milky Way's core is a crowded, chaotic place, full of massive stars, dense clouds of gas, and our very own supermassive black hole, Sagittarius, a star. NASA combined data from three telescopes, Chandra X-ray, Hubble Optical, and Spitzer Infrared, to create both an image and a soundscape of this region. They scan across the image from left to right, turning brightness into volume and position into pitch. Bright stars become high, sparkling notes. Clouds of gas hum in the lower range and near the center, Sagittarius. A star produces a powerful tone, standing out from the rest like a soloist in a choir. Because this region is so packed with stars, the soundscape is dense, layered, and constantly shifting. It's not a calm, steady hum like Perseus. It's a busy, glittering chorus that reflects the complexity of life in a galactic core. When you listen to it, you're hearing the heart of our galaxy, a place 26,000 light years away but tied directly to our own existence. Everything in our solar system orbits this center, and this is its song. From the galaxy's bustling core, we travel to a much smaller but incredibly intense object, the Vela Pulsar. This is the collapsed core of a massive star that exploded in a supernova thousands of years ago. What makes pulsars special is their rotation. The Vela pulsar spins about 11 times every second, shooting beams of radiation from its poles like a lighthouse in space. In its sonification, scientists use a radar sweep approach, scanning outwards from the pulsar. Bright features in X-rays create louder tones, while their distance from the center changes the pitch. The pulsar itself appears as a fast, regular beat, a kind of ticking that never misses a beat. The sound is both mechanical and natural, a cosmic clock keeping perfect time for thousands of years. The Vela pulsar may be tiny compared to galaxies or clusters, but its precision and strength give it a presence far larger than its size suggests. <laughs> Leaving Vela, we visit other pulsars whose signals have been captured directly in radio waves. These objects spin anywhere from once every few seconds to hundreds of times per second, and each spin sends a burst of radio energy toward Earth. When scientists convert those radio waves into sound, the result is a steady sequence of beeps or clicks. Some pulsars sound slow and deliberate. Beep! 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 Others are lightning fast, producing a rapid-fire staccato that feels almost like an engine at full speed. These sounds are real in the sense that the timing comes directly from the pulsar's spin. You're hearing the beat of a dead star, still marking time long after the explosion that created it. It's a reminder that not all cosmic music is grand and sweeping. Some of it is as simple and as perfect as a ticking clock in the middle of space. Crab Nebula is the remains of a star that exploded in 1054 AD, 
an event recorded by astronomers in China almost a thousand years ago. At its center sits a pulsar spinning 30 times a second. In the nebula's sonification, the pulsar's location is marked by a bright, bell-like tone. Surrounding gas clouds become flowing notes that sweep up and down in pitch. The combination is strangely peaceful, even though it represents the aftermath of a massive stellar death. Every chime from the pulsar is the sound of a neutron star, still spinning relentlessly, centuries after its parent star was destroyed. The rest of the nebula plays like the soft echo of that long-ago explosion. Our next stop is the Jellyfish Nebula, also known as IC443. This object is another supernova remnant, but much larger and more diffuse than the Crab Nebula. Scientists have mapped its X-ray, optical, and radio emissions into different musical ranges. Red light from cooler gas becomes deep, slow tones. Green from warmer material forms mid-range notes. Blue light from the hottest regions turns into higher pitches. Stars scattered throughout the image are represented as short, bright drops of sound, almost like water droplets falling into a pool. As the sonification sweeps across the nebula, these drops punctuate the flow, creating a layered, moving melody. The jellyfish nebula gets its name from its wispy, tentacle-like filaments of gas, and in sound form you can almost imagine those tendrils swaying. It's a softer, more graceful part of our journey, but it's still the remains of a star that once died in a violent blast. This is the universe showing that beauty and destruction often go hand in hand. Next, we drift toward a pair of galaxies caught in a slow motion dance, their shapes twisting as gravity pulls them together. When astronomers sonify an image of such interacting galaxies, each bright point becomes a note and the sweeping arcs of starlight turn into smooth, sliding tones. The result is similar to the sound of a singing bowl, a continuous, shifting hum that rises and falls as the scan moves across the image. This isn't just art. The sound changes reflect the density, brightness, and placement of stars and gas in real astronomical data. By listening as well as looking, Scientists can pick out details they might. It's a different way to see the slow dance of galaxies through their translated shimmering voices. Our last stop takes us to two of the most famous sites in space. Stefan's Quintet is a group of five galaxies, four of which are locked in a gravitational interaction. The Sombrero Galaxy, by contrast, is a single, elegant spiral with a bright core and a wide dust ring. In their sonifications, each galaxy becomes an instrument. In Stefan's Quintet, the scan across the image starts quietly. Then more and more galaxies join in, creating a layered orchestral swell. Some tones are deep and steady, while others are higher and brighter, representing bursts of star formation or intense galactic cores. The Sombrero Galaxy's sonification is simpler but striking, a single clean melodic line that follows the galaxy's bright halo with occasional deeper notes for its dust lane. Together they form a fitting finale, the quiet majesty of a lone galaxy paired with the complex harmonies of a galactic crowd. What did you think of these sounds? Let me know in the comments below.